Hi, everyone. Welcome to Real Estate on the Front Range. This is Sean Gilliam, your host. In this episode, I'll be covering the monthly market update for December. I'm going to take a look at what's going on with mortgage interest rates, as well as the most recent data here for Boulder, Larimer, and Weld Counties. And at the end, I'm going to cover some tips uh, for buyers and sellers, strategies that you can use to be successful in this current real estate market that we're in. Uh, so I want to go ahead and get started. We'll talk about those mortgage interest rates. Uh, as you know, if you've been following along, uh, interest rates were up above 7% in recent weeks. Uh, but as of yesterday, the average rate for a 30-year fixed rate conventional mortgage was 6.13%. So rates are trending downward. This is a good thing. Uh, we hope they continue to trend downward. I will say when you look at uh, what the experts are forecasting for 2023, uh, they range between 5 and 7%, with most of them on average coming in around 6%, which is still good, uh, relatively speaking, although it still makes it difficult for some because home values have gone up exponentially uh, just in the last couple of years, such that even a 6% rate still makes it difficult to purchase a home. But I think uh, things might be moving in the right direction. Uh, some forecasters like Lawrence Yoon uh, with the National Association of Realtors believes that interest rates have already peaked, and so we're coming down and likely won't go past 7% again. And uh, we also have Barry Habib from MBS Highway. He's predicting that in the first six months of 2023, uh, we might even get down uh, below 5%. So good news ahead, hopefully, uh, if these forecasters are correct uh, for mortgage interest rates, that'll give you more purchasing power and make it easier to buy a home. I will talk about the implication of the rates changing uh, at the end of this video. I'm going to cover tips for buyers and sellers, like I said. So uh, stay tuned for that because I think that would be helpful and, and give you some good perspective. Uh, moving forward, I, I always like to offer people free consultations. So if you or someone you know has questions about the real estate market, what your home might be worth, or based on your circumstances, should you buy now or should you wait? Uh, or should you sell now? Should you wait? I would be glad to talk with you, answer any questions you have, no obligation, uh, just uh, to help you out and give you some perspective on what your options are and what your next best move is. Uh, so don't hesitate to get in touch. You can email me or text or call me at 970-313-6706. All right, well, let's move on to looking at the data. And I'll also cover my buyer and seller guides as well and give you a, a good glimpse of what's contained in those. Uh, those are free to you as well. So if you need help or just want to get some ideas, uh, that's a good um, reference tool to use. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. All right, so in addition to free consultation, I also have my free buyer and seller guides these are just great reference tools for you to think about what you might need to do or some steps you might need to take uh, before you buy a home or sell your home. And it covers all sorts of helpful information. They come out on a quarterly basis, and it's based on most recent data uh, at a national level, uh, based on mortgage rates, what's going on with the economy, uh, what are some trends in the housing market overall, that will give you some ideas of what you might need to do to get ready to buy a home or sell a home. Uh, just a quick overview of the table of contents here, what's happening in the housing market overall, uh, expert insights for today's home buyers, three trends that are good news for home buyers, and then so on and so forth, all the way down here to the benefits of home ownership, uh, why it's better to buy than rent, and then also a crucial first step, getting uh, mortgage pre-approval. And then once you get that pre-approval, things to avoid after applying for a mortgage, because uh, there are some things that... Uh, buyers might do that could disqualify them for getting a loan and could be a costly uh, mistake. So, um, and then similar for the seller guides, as uh, you look at the table of contents, you know, based on the most recent uh, trends in our housing market and our, or our greater economy, should I sell my house this winter? Uh, expert insights for today's seller, what's ahead for mortgage rates and home prices, uh, as well as top reasons homeowners are selling uh, as a trend overall at the national level. And then on down here, you can see some other helpful ideas. Uh, these are, like I said, a reference tool to help uh, provoke your thoughts as far as, you know, what questions to ask or maybe some questions you didn't even think to ask. And it might also generate more questions that you can get in touch with me and I'd be glad to help you with uh, so that you have all the information you need at your fingertips so you can make the best decision moving forward. So take a look at these. Again, if you want a copy, go ahead and get in touch with me. I'll send you a PDF. Or like I said, you can access those on my website. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the market data for Boulder, Learn, or Weld Counties. So now we can see uh, what's going on in our local market. 
Not much has changed. Uh, the trend is is kind of flattening out, uh, so no drastic changes overall. Uh, but we'll take a look at this data uh, year over year as well as month over month. So starting with uh, new listings, you can see those are down. Pending and closed sales are down just because, you know, there's limited activity. Part of that is seasonal because we are almost uh, to the holidays. Happy holidays, by the way. And then also uh, some of this is related or a lot of it is related to those mortgage interest rates being higher. Uh, so they have come down, which is good news. And hopefully that trend will continue, as I said. But let's take a look here at days on market until sale. For the month of November, it's 54 days from the time a home goes on the market until it goes under contract. That's up 35% uh, from last year. Compared to last month, it was 49 days. So that it's slightly trending upward as far as days on market until sale. And that's kind of what we expected to see, uh, not only related to our economy, but also seasonally. This is something we expect to see you know, during the winter months. Median sales price is down from last year at 725,000. The average sales price is down 2.5% from last year at this time. It's at $990,931 average sales price for a home in Boulder County. Uh, this is compared to last month when it was $1,005,630. So not a significant difference. It's a change of about 1.47%. Um, so it's pretty much stabilizing, I would say, considering uh, what's going on uh, with all the other data we're looking at here. The percent of list price received is 97.3%. So on average, homes are selling at 97.3% of their original list price. That's down 4.1% from last year at this time when it was 101.5%. That was a much more robust uh, winter market than uh, we typically see. Uh, when we look at the percent of original list price received last month, it was 97.6%. So again, stabilizing, not a significant change. Uh, that just shows that uh, overall the market is kind of leveling out in some of these uh, metrics that we're looking at. Inventory of homes for sale is up 147.8% from last year at this time. Uh, so there's 451 homes on the market in Boulder County for November compared to 182 uh, November of 2021. And then we see our month supply of inventory is 1.8. That is up 260% from November of 21. Uh, when it was 0.5 months supply of inventory. Uh, the month supply of inventory in October uh, was 2.2. So a month supply of inventory has gone down slightly. I wouldn't say it's a significant change, but it has gone down slightly. And that's possibly due to the fact that fewer people are putting their homes on the market uh, in part because the holidays are upon us. So that's what's going on in Boulder County year over year and month over month. Let's hop on over here to Larimer County. And you can see new listings, pending sales, and closed sales are down. Days on market until sale is 59. That is up 37.2% from last year at this time when it was 43 days on market until sale. When we look at what happened in the last month, it was 51 days on market until sale. So again, we're seeing a trend, an upward trend in that days on market until sale. Homes are staying on the market longer. That's just a simple fact. Median sales price in Larimer County for a home was $552,500. That's up 4.8% from last year at this time. The average sales price for a home in Larimer County is $651,000. That's up 5.6% from last year at this time. When we compare it to last month, the average uh, sale price of a home in Larimer County was $677,820. So that was about a 4% a decrease in the average sales price of a home. Uh, for Larimer County last month. Percent of list price received is 98.6. That is down 2.4% from last year at this time when it was at 101%. October, we saw about 98.5%. So not a significant change. That's similar to Boulder County. That th Those metrics are stabilizing. The only one that seems to be increasing is uh, fairly significantly is that days on market until sale. Inventory of homes for sale is up 111% from last year at this time. So 724 homes on the market in Larimer County compared to 342 last year at this time. Our month supply of inventory for Larimer County is 1.8. That is up 200% from last year at this time when it was at 0.6. But compared to last month when it was 1.9, not a significant change. So that metric, it seems to be stabilizing. Now let's take a look at Weld County. A little bit of a change in Weld County. Um, Average sales prices we'll see went up 
Uh, so a little bit more activity. I can only speculate that some of that is uh, probably due to people are looking out in Weld County because you get a little more bang for your buck. And so people are, are stepping just outside of Boulder County. I've got some buyers right now that are looking in the greater Longmont area, uh, but they're also open to towns like Firestone, Frederick, Decono, Johnstown, all in Weld County, just because you can get a little more bang for your buck out there. Uh, but let's go ahead and take a look at the data. Overall, new listings, pending sales, and closed sales are all down. Again, that's consistent with uh, decreased market activity. Days on market until sale is 54. That's a 59% increase from last year at this time when it was 34 days on market. When we compare it to last month, October, it was 47 days on market until sale. So <clears throat> that is the one metric that continues to trend upward. Median sales price for a home in Weld County is 479,000. That's about on par what it was uh, November of 2021. When we take a look at the average sales price for a home in Weld County, right now it's $528,233. That's about 4.5% increase uh, from last year at this time. When we compare to what it was last month in October, it was $522,199 for a home uh, on average in Weld County. And so we've seen a, uh, an increase of about 1.15% in the average sales price in Weld County. Not a significant change that could be within that standard deviation, um, but that does show that the Weld County market is, is hanging in there pretty well. Percent of list price received is 98.9%. That's down 2.3% from last year at this time when it was at 101.2. Um, when we look at last month, it was 98.9% or 98.8%. So it's about the same. So again, the that metric is about the same in all three counties, uh, including the uh, month supply of inventory. It's 1.8. That was 2.2 in October, um, but it's up 157.1% from uh, November of 2021. So uh, definitely inventory has increased across the board. As I mentioned before, that's related to the fact that we're not getting a significant amount of new listings, but the homes that are coming on the market are sitting around and staying on the market longer. And so uh, they're piling up and causing that MSI metric to, to increase. But again, it's stabilizing, relatively speaking, uh, compared to uh, what it's done in recent months. So that's the data. Uh, taking a look at um, Boulder, Larimer, and Weld counties, you can see uh, the trends that are going on. If you have questions about it and what that might mean for you, don't hesitate to get in touch. But I'll also cover that here in the next segment as far as strategies for buyers and sellers. So stay tuned. In light of all this, what should buyers and sellers do? Well, I have some good tips, some good strategies for buyers and sellers, you know, based on what's going on in the market. And even though the data would suggest we're still in a seller's market, it's behaving more like a buyer's market as sellers are motivated to sell their home and they're willing to do price reductions and other things to get buyers to purchase their homes. Because some sellers are just in a place that they have to move on quickly. And quite frankly, sellers are just not used to having to wait around for a buyer to write an offer on their property. So it makes them a little uncomfortable. Uh, so for buyers, I would suggest that this is a great time to buy for that very reason, as well as others. Uh, there's little to no competition. You have an easy time looking at properties. You have time to think about whether or not you want to buy a particular home. Whereas before you didn't, you had to make your decision uh, over a weekend. And uh, so, so good op opportunity now for buyers. This has not uh, been the situation in years past. So I would encourage you to take advantage of this. Now, some buyers might push back and say, hey, you know, we want to buy a house. That's great that homes are sitting on the market longer and that we won't have to come in over list price. But it's still kind of expensive and we're not sure what's going to happen with the economy or with interest rates. Well, this leads to my second point. This is good news for you. Some sellers are willing to offer concessions to pay down your mortgage interest rate. Uh, they might be willing to do a permanent rate buy down of one or two points, which would make things much more affordable for you and give you more purchasing power. When you think of the average 30 year fixed rate uh, mortgage at 6.13%, if they paid it down to 5.13%, or 4.13%, that would be a big help to you in purchasing a home. So like I said, not all, uh, but some buyers are willing to pay a concession. And I'm willing to help you negotiate with that so that they can see that it's cheaper for them to pay down your rate than it is for them to wait around for another buyer and likely have to do a significant price reduction uh, that's more than that concession they would have had to pay 
uh, to, to buy your rate down. So I can help you with that because uh, there's options out there. They can do a permanent uh, rate buy down. They can do a temporary rate buy down, uh, like a 2-1 or a 3-2-1 buy down. And those are just ways to make it more affordable for you up front uh, to purchase a home. And then uh, down the road here in the next year or two, rates are likely going to come down far enough, maybe into that fourth percentile range, so that you can refinance permanently at that rate and uh, continue that lower monthly mortgage payment for the life of the loan. So good options out there uh, for you to consider with those loan options and sellers that are willing to uh, potentially pay a concession to pay down that rate. Now, the other thing I want you to consider too, uh, it's it's impossible to time the market, but right now with little to no competition on homes, uh, if you wait till mortgage interest rates come down to a more comfortable level, say in the five, uh, fifth percentile range or four, um, there's a lot of other buyers out there too that are going to be wanting to do that. And so if you do that, there's a potential that we could be back to that hustle or bustling market that we had before where you're competing with other buyers, uh, multiple offer scenarios, you might have to come in over list price and all the negotiating power that you have right now uh, will be gone because sellers will not need to pay, pay a concession uh, to pay down your rate. They will take the best offer that they can get. And now you're, you're in a situation where you're going to have a hard time getting the home you want and getting a seller to accept your offer. So Right now is the best time uh, for buyers to buy a home. And uh, you can do a permanent or a temporary rate buy down. Um, and uh, sellers, like I said, might help with that. Uh, and then also you're gonna avoid uh, the mad rush uh, when the mob of buyers uh, come back on the market here in uh, the coming months when rates start to go down again. So weigh your options, feel free to discuss with me what uh, the best move is. Uh, going forward. I also have local lenders that can help you evaluate your financial situation and see what kind of a loan uh, will work best for you and what you can qualify for so that you can write a good, strong offer uh, to a seller and uh, make it more affordable for you to purchase a home. Now I want to talk to the sellers. All right. So it's essential. Uh, there's a couple of things I want you to consider to make it easier for a buyer to purchase your home. As I mentioned, you know, by and large, homes are taking over 50 days before they go under contract. So you got to be comfortable sitting there for a while. Um, but I will say that some of the nicer homes and sellers that price it well and offer some perks tend to get their homes sold more quickly. And I'm going to go over those here real quick. Uh, so price it conservatively. That's my first piece of advice for sellers. We'll take a look at comps. We'll see what similar properties in your neighborhood are selling for. And I'll also talk to those agents that have active listings going on to see what kind of activity they have going on. Uh, but essentially, when uh, we put your home on the market, we're going to want to price it slightly below what your competition is doing. And here's why. What I've seen happen too often in this recent uh, market that we're in is that uh, a seller will put their home on the market. And then a few days later or a week later, the comparable properties that have been sitting on the market for a while will do a price reduction, sometimes $10,000, $20,000, which will then make your property stand out there by itself as the most expensive home in the neighborhood. This is not as attractive to buyers and may cause you to have to do a price reduction to keep up with them. So it's better to price it a little bit lower, price it conservatively, and then pair that with some of the other perks that I'm going to mention here as well. So keep that in mind. And then as I mentioned in talking about uh, uh, buyer's options, uh, consider the benefits as a seller of offering a concession up front to pay down rates uh, for a buyer. This will make it easier for them to want to write an offer on your home because they know that with that uh, rate buy down, that they will have a lower monthly mortgage payment for uh, permanently or for the first couple of years or first three years uh, before it gets back up to that 6% range that we're in right now. So a uh, good option. I can uh, show you that it's actually cheaper to do a rate buy down than to wait around for a strong buyer and potentially have to do a price reduction or two. A lot of those price reductions are come down 10, 20, 30, 40, 50,000. Some of the rate buy downs you can do for 10, 12,000, uh, depending on uh, the cost of your home and, and the type of loan that they're getting. So it would be cheaper for you to do a, offer a concession to buy down a buyer's rate than to wait around and end up having to do a couple of price reductions. I would also suggest doing a pre-inspection. One thing that I think is making it difficult for buyers is that if they have a higher monthly mortgage rate or payment, 
it's harder for them to consider some of these bigger cost items that come with owning a home, whether it's replacing a roof, replacing mechanicals, or if there's issues with the sewer line or other expensive uh, high ticket items that go along with owning a home. So it's wise to do a pre-inspection to find out if there's any significant issues that you'll have to deal with during an inspection period when you're under contract. Uh, I've seen buyers will terminate a contract if it looks like it's just going to be too costly for them to make these repairs down the road. And it's even costly for you as a seller to take care of those things out of pocket. With that, I would also say get a home warranty. Uh, there's lots of good programs out there. One of my favorites is offered through First American, and they will cover uh, significant or high cost items related to your home uh, prior to even getting to the closing table. So let's say uh, you list your home this weekend. And as you're waiting for it to go, uh, you know, to get a strong offer from a buyer, your furnace goes out. Well, if you have that home warranty uh, in place, that furnace will be replaced and uh, it'll save you a lot of money out of pocket. So getting that home warranty uh, can help you make some of those initial repairs based on that pre-inspection so that the buyer will have confidence that they're buying a home that's intact. Uh, the mechanicals are in good shape. The sewer line's in good shape. And uh, it won't cost them a lot of money in the near future to make significant repairs on the home. So that's my encouragement to you. Again, um, price it conservatively. Take a look at uh, the benefits of offering a concession to buyers to pay down their rate. Take a look at doing a pre-inspection so that you can make any necessary repairs. Uh, with that home warranty also, you won't have to pay for that uh, entirely out of pocket. Uh, so get that home warranty as well. Uh, it'll just make your home look more attractive and give buyers more confident uh, when they want to write an offer for your home. So hope this helps. If you have any questions, feel free to get in touch. Like I said, I offer free consultation, can help you walk through the steps. I know some good lenders uh, that can help you. And as I mentioned, you know, for those home warranty products, I also know inspectors that uh, can do a great job for you as far as looking at your home. So feel free to get in touch, 970-313-6706. And I look forward to working with you soon. Take care.